Each week, American History TV's American Artifacts takes viewers behind the scenes at archives, museums, and historic sites. I'm Rick Prelinger. I'm uh, founder of the Prelinger Archives, which is a large collection of historical film located in San Francisco. And I'm also a board member of the Internet Archive, which is a nonprofit internet library located in San Francisco. And this morning we're sitting in the middle of the offices of the Internet Archive. I began collecting film in 1982. I was working as a researcher on a documentary project, and this project involved searching for a lot of material that wasn't in conventional collections, uh, specifically material about everyday life in the post-World War II period. So I became very interested in industrial advertising educational films. Um, these were considered trivial and useless, and at that point in time in the early 80s, hardly collected. But uh, as an outgrowth of my work on the film, I began collecting, and quite quickly, this collection grew extremely large and people began to ask me for access to the material and suddenly even though I was still an, an unschooled film collector with no archival training uh, I had started something which was by default in archives. The United States is, is the most media rich nation on earth. I've often thought that we throw away more media than other countries ever create. And um, the early to mid-80s was a, a time of media transition in this country. In the same way that now we're moving from physical to digital media, in those days we were moving from film to video. And so there were these huge collections of film that were going begging, that were uh, uh, a drug on the market. They were difficult for the institutions or the companies that own them. So that in a comparatively short amount of time, I had, gosh, well, ultimately, the collection was about 200,000 items. It wasn't so long ago in the history of man's voyage toward a better world that ships were carrying eager passengers toward the shores of a new nation that was just in the building. Our forefathers were constructing the foundation of this nation by interlocking inseparably the blocks of our political and economic freedom. When you walk the cat back through uh, the 20th century and try to get a sense of how many non-theatrical films were produced, I call them ephemeral films, by the way, because they were made for specific purposes at specific times. They weren't meant to be kept in the long run. But it, it appears that the total ephemeral film production between the 20s and the 80s, sort of the end of film, is between four and 500,000 items. Uh, we ended up collecting by the end about 15 percent of the total production, which is not bad. It's a pretty decent cross-section. From the very beginning of film, film was mobilized to educate. One of the things that's kind of um, a little funny to think about today is that teachers who wanted to use film in the classroom were radicals. They were really, that was quite far out, you know, to say the textbooks weren't the most efficient or the most vivid way of imparting knowledge. That was a wild thing to say. The room lights are dimmed, the projector is running, the classroom has become a setting for use of a very effective teaching tool, the classroom film. But gradually it took hold, and uh, although there were many, many educational films in the 20s and 30s, the catalytic event was World War II because uh, World War II saw film used as a training medium successfully and on an incredibly broad scale. Rigid training, hard work, working together. In this way, the chaplain was prepared for the difficult role ahead. He would be a soldier, yet not a soldier. One, two, three, four, five, all right, men, enough of that. Rest. Well, I'm glad that's over. And I thought I was in condition. And after the war, um, there were all these surplus projectors that went to schools in the U.S. And so suddenly there was an infrastructure. Um, I think that in the neighborhood of around 200,000 educational films were produced in the United States. Um, and they range from works of art, consciously produced as films with, you know, some sort of special 
production value and, and, and creativity to, you know, tremendously banal films about how to brush your teeth or how to ask for a date. Um, the, the, the value of educational films today is that um, there are tremendous documentation of, of, of how they wanted young Americans to turn out. They show us what we were supposed to be. Bob is hungry and the soup looks good. He is using his company manners, but as we see, he is doing at least three things wrong. Most people think of film as stories that you see in theaters. And the truth is, is that film cinema is a much, much broader category. And that uh, the movies that you see in theaters are really only a small part of the, the total national and world production of films. And when you begin to broaden out and look at, at these uh, poorly remembered films like you can see on the Internet Archive, you, um, you're, you're, you're able to get a much broader sense of what our country's history is. And what's more, you can actually download the stuff and edit it. You can make your own synthesis. You can make your own historical film. Um, whether you're a student wanting to show stuff in a classroom or a teacher wanting to show some films to kids or a maker, um, there is so much there. And, and, and you know, my interest is in, uh, in, in creating millions of new people who are authors, who are creators with moving images. And one thing that you can do is give them stuff to work with, give them material to edit. And uh, so that's what our activities have been all about.